I am on the board of the Open Rights Group in the UK, so I uh, help them with campaigns. So the Open Rights Group is a, a group of uh, a, a digital liberty activists, um, and what we have done is we've raised funds in order to hire a staff who uh, do the thinking behind uh, public policy mm -hmm. that allows us to understand how public policy affects digital liberties. So they campaign uh, for um, uh, free culture, okay. they campaign against uh, the enclosure of copyright. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment what the, we've got a, a campaign running about ACTA, uh -huh. uh, we have a campaign running about um, parody law mm -hmm. because in the UK um, there is no fair use exception that lets you create parody. Oh, okay. So we're, we've got a campaign running about that. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a, a digital liberties organization that is running campaigns to uh, develop and protect uh, digital rights in the UK. So I do that. Um, I'm also involved with the Document Foundation. Mm -hmm. The Document Foundation is the the group that is uh, developing LibreOffice, mm -hmm. and uh, the Document Foundation has ju was just been incorporated. So here at Fosdem, they're they're signing the incorporation documents, and LibreOffice has been a, a, a really a, a, an amazing success with uh, people able to. Um, uh, recruit new developers, implement new features. There's been regular releases coming out for, for a year and a half now. So well, I work on LibreOffice too. And then I also talk with the folk from the Libra Java community. Okay. So that's one of the communities here mm -hmm. that I'll be uh, dealing with. And then uh, I, I, I work as a, an open source consultant. Mm -hmm. So I work with um, non-profit organizations and companies to understand open source licensing, mm -hmm. open source policy, open source law. Mm -hmm. okay. All the ambassadors signed ACTA in Japan secretly, mm -hmm. which was a despicable uh, piece of betrayal of their citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're going to get a lot of trouble because of that. Not least because they've, they've really failed to have a transparent, inclusive process, even for members of the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. So you saw that last week the rapporteur mm -hmm. on ACTA uh, resigned. resigned. Uh, I've never seen a rapporteur make a public statement against the subject for which he's the rapporteur before. Mm -hmm. and so that's, that shows you just how improperly ACTA has been conducted. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, it was signed, but that doesn't mean anything. It's, it isn't real in Europe until the European Parliament approves it, mm -hmm. and they don't have the vote about that until June. Okay. So there's still plenty of time mm -hmm. to tell MEPs how disgusted citizens are. RSI joined in with a, a civil society campaign against ACTA a couple of weeks back. We signed that there was being organized by Access Now, okay. and we signed a public statement by Access Now. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, it will actually, because we've got a new governance, it will be up to our members to determine exactly what actions we take. Mm -hmm. But I fully anticipate that we'll be taking specific actions against ACTA. Okay. And then Open Rights Group is doing the same thing. Open Rights Group is going to be running a campaign where we're one of the stewards of the um, the public protest against ACTA, which is happening on February 11th in, uh, in all around Europe. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, we're also investigating what the best way of using our resources is to, to highlight the problem. Because mm -hmm. we think that when members of the European Parliament have ACTA explained to them by citizens rather than by lobbyists, mm -hmm. they will realize just how bad it is. Just what happened with SOPA and PIPA. Yes. And you now, know, yeah. So looking back, I, you know, I was involved in the Software Patent Directive mm -hmm. in 2005 in opposing that. And we found that once politicians realized that the story they had been told wasn't the whole story, mm -hmm. their vote changed. Mm -hmm. And we think that's what has to happen with ACTA as well. We think politicians need to understand that although the European Commission is telling them that everything is fine, they're not hearing the whole story. Mm -hmm. That they're completely missing the impact that ACTA will have on, on free culture. Mm -hmm. They're completely missing the impact that ACTA will have on emerging business models. And by passing ACTA, they risk keeping uh, European industry mm -hmm. in the 20th century and stopping it from being able to progress to the 21st century. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you, some, I'll give you some, some general statements about it. One of the things that ACTA does is ACTA um, takes away discretion. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, in most cases in law, you know, geeks like to think that the law is a programming language mm -hmm. and that you can run the law through you know, uh, 
uh, GCL, you know, the, 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 the GNU Compact Law Compiler, mm -hmm. and uh, that they're going to get a list of error messages and warnings that come out that they can then go back and fix. Okay? Now, the law doesn't work that way. The law depends on there being lots of discretion, lots of grey areas, and people making decisions based on all those grey areas. And if they can't agree, eventually you go to a court and the judge makes a final decision for you. Mm -hmm. Now what Actuary is doing is Actuary is squeezing the discretion out of copyright law. Mm -hmm. So that all of the things that in Europe allow you to create parody, that they allow you to use um, other people's ideas, all of those things rely on common sense mm -hmm. and uh, discretion mm -hmm. and actor is going to squeeze the common sense and discretion out of copyright law. That's the general statement about mm -hmm. it. Specifically, um, the actor is trying to make things that have always been civil law violations criminal law violations. Mm -hmm. It has a very vague test which if you fail the test in there of commercial use or commercial scale, sorry, if you fail the commercial scale test you become subject to criminal law mm -hmm. instead of civil law and that means that maybe you're a movie maker mm -hmm. and maybe you have been filming in Brussels and in the background there has been something going on that's copyrighted mm -hmm. and you upload your video to a website and your video gets downloaded by a hundred thousand people well you are now operating on a commercial scale mm -hmm. and if the copyright holder of that copyrighted work in the background decides to sue you mm -hmm. you're subject to criminal penalties not civil penalties mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one and there are plenty of examples like that where the, the law is being, it's being made brittle, mm -hmm. the law is having discretion squeezed out of it, and that's all serving the interests of people who own lots of copyright and lots of patents. Mm -hmm. the, w one of the great shames yeah. about all of this copyright law stuff is that uh, the, America, the US trade representative is using America's power to make the law worse everywhere else in the world. Yeah. And that's a great shame that's mm -hmm. going on there. And we have to understand that you know, just because you don't live in a country that has uh, an American law, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean your government won't be putting in American laws soon. Mm -hmm. Because the US Trade Representative is going and saying, you know, would you like, uh, would you like subsidy on your, on your motor industry? Mm -hmm. uh, if you change your copyright law to be like ours, we'll give you a subsidy for your motor industry. Okay. Would you like us to buy your, but to buy your 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 wheat and your rice? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll buy your wheat and your rice if you change your copyright law to be like our copyright law. Mm -hmm. So they're going around making a world where everybody has got the same restrictive laws, mm -hmm. and we need to be very concerned, even if we think we live in a country that isn't affected. Mm -hmm. the, the difficulty that we have with eBooks is that publishers believe. Mm -hmm that uh, they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, what's going on here, this is, so the problem that we face here comes from something that Lawrence Lessig wrote about. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Lessig uh, explained that, um, uh, that copyright was never meant to apply to you and me. Mm -hmm. Copyright was a set of laws to regulate what happened between producers. It was, it was there actually to stop printing presses stealing each other's work. Mm -hmm. And when you buy a book, you're not subject to copyright mm -hmm. because none of the things that you do with a book involve copying. Mm -hmm. When you give the book to somebody else, the copyright law doesn't apply because mm -hmm. you're not copying the book. You're, mm -hmm. giving, you're giving, a, a, giving the book away. Now, in the digital realm, the analogues of all the things you do with books involve a copy. Uh, so when you buy a book from um, from a bookstore in Brussels, you go into the bookstore and you, you pay them your money and they give you the book. At no point are you affected by copyright law mm -hmm. because there's no act of copying has taken place. Whereas when you buy a book from uh, on your Kindle, everything you do involves a copy. Mm -hmm. The act of buying it involves copying it from here to there mm -hmm. into your library. Mm -hmm. The act of reading it involves copying it out of your library onto your Kindle. Mm -hmm. And consequently, publishers have been able to gain power that they're not entitled to. They've been able to gain power over your use of culture, mm -hmm. which copyright law was never intended to give them. Mm -hmm. They were never supposed to have power over culture. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to have power over copying. Mm -hmm. And so the, the problem that we're seeing with ebooks is we're seeing an abuse of an illegitimately gained power. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's why there is a problem. Now, we can mitigate that problem by encouraging them to treat licensing as rental. So I would be willing to pay 99 cents to rent a copy of a book, 
uh, if I conveniently got it delivered to my my, my Linux desktop. Um, but I feel that I, you know I was looking at a book yesterday on, on Amazon. The book was six pounds ninety nine, or for six pounds ninety five I could have the Kindle version. And I thought, well, why would I do that? And if I'm going to pay six pounds, you know, nearly seven pounds. Why wouldn't I just ask them to give me the book? Yeah. Why would I want the e-book? Yeah. Um, so I think there's got to be a big change in this industry. I think that they're, first of all, they are, the, 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 the control that they're exercising is illegitimately gained. Mm -hmm. Society never meant to give them that power. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the way that they're using it is abusive. Mm -hmm. they, they should be using it to create reasonable markets, not to create unreasonable markets. Mm -hmm. The whole academic publishing world mm -hmm. is in massive need of reform mm -hmm. in the connected age. Mm -hmm. but, you know, that's again, uh, what Apple is doing there is entirely typical of Apple. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I, 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 I put a picture on the screen in my talk of what they're like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you know, people shouldn't be in any way surprised that they're acting this way. If you've already decided that you are happy to be locked in, then what they're doing there is. Is, is no worse than the rest of what they're doing. Personally, if I was um, involved in a college, I would be really keen to get um, open academic publications mm -hmm. and open courseware, mm -hmm. and there's plenty of it out there. The thing is that the specific textbooks that they're publishing, mm -hmm. um, the publishers who are involved are still living in the 20th century, and so find Apple's 20th century approach to book publishing very pleasing. Mm -hmm. so, so, all I'm saying here is I think the problem is somewhere else. I think that what Apple is doing is, you know, it isn't like you've got an alternative once you've decided to be that kind of slave. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, it's like a slave uh, complaining about the kind of whip his master is using, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's, it, it, it's, you know, I, I prefer the, 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 the knotted cord rather than, rather than the bones, please. Okay. That, that's the point that we've got to in this argument, I think. <laughs> the things that I'm passionate about at the moment are I'm, I'm, I'm focused on actor. Uh -huh. We have a, a short five-month window to defeat it. Uh -huh. And I think we need to make sure that we watch carefully for how every every individual digital citizen can play their part because mm -hmm. we're going to need everyone um, freedom doesn't have any lobbyists the only lobbyists that freedom has is us mm -hmm. so if we decide not to play if we decide we're a bit tired or you know that this doesn't seem very interesting this is our last chance to stop it